to another episode of Dumb Guys Talk about fantasy baseball. Mm -hmm. And this episode, we're updating our sleepers, so we're getting you, getting you a fresh list. But yes, before we get started on that, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Mm -hmm. Click that little subscribe, click that little thumbs up, and obviously comment because we love to hear what you have to say. Um, this isn't the only thing we do, obviously. We, uh, we do some other videos. Heath's got his Brazilian videos that he does. Yes, we do those every Saturday, mm -hmm. just about. We're uploading these videos on Wednesdays and Sundays, so up until the beginning of the season, stay tuned because you're going to have a lot of fantasy baseball talk going on. For sure. So should we jump right in? Let's get it going. All right, so I actually put the pitchers on top here so that my first four selections are going to be pitchers. I'm going to start with the closer, and it's Mark Melanson, ah. the Giants closer. Mm -hmm. um, I think people are forgetting about how good his 2016-2015 seasons were, and supposedly last year's Lack of success was all injury related, and he's throwing completely pain-free right now. Nice. So he had a success successful surgery in the offseason. But the two years before that, he had 51 and 47 saves, and the highest ERA in, four, in the last four years was a 2.23. So I think last year was a blip on the radar. He'll have a nice bounce back. Um, he's a sinker ball pitcher, pitching to what may be the best defensive infield in baseball. Now that the Giants have Longoria third, along with Crawford, Panic, and Belt. Nice. Um, so I think, look for him. He's going so far down that I've had him on my bench a lot in mock drafts. Yeah, so where is he rated? Where's his rank? He's 240 on ESPN. 240, so yeah, yeah that's pretty much super deep. Now, what I did notice, I actually did a mock draft earlier today, and I had him, um, I was eyeing him as, as my, my second uh, closer, um, and he went way before that. Did he? Yeah. So I think I think he's going to start moving up the list, but keep an eye on him. I think he's still going to be pretty valuable considering the top closers are going, you know, before the tenth round. Um, yeah, because um, I see some people take like Jansen and Chapman and stuff like sixth, seventh round. Yeah. Um, and so don't freak out if those go and you wanted them. Um, there's some guys like this later. Yeah. All right, good option there. Uh, my first guy on my sleepers list is No More Mazzara. Is that how you say it, Mazzara? Mazara. I'm, you know, don't you don't know. want to ask me about pronunciation. I know, right? We're terrible. Yeah. Um, but this guy is just 23 years old, mm -hmm. so he's really young, playing for Texas there. He's had two years in a row with 20 home runs, had 101 RBIs last year, um, and that Yahoo has him ranked right now at 149. Um, pretty sure this guy's an outfielder, uh -huh. right? With a little bit of power, but you know, you you can expect a young guy like that power numbers to go up. I think he's a pretty good option. I like the young guys, the yeah. guys that you just haven't seen very much and that are going late. I, I'm not actually an early young guy like a Trey Turner. Yeah, but right. Like a later young. I, guy. I'm seeing a lot of talented young guys going late, mm -hmm. um, and I'm actually surprised at how late they're going. And I'll get to a few more as yeah. well. But yeah, for sure. All right, on to my next picture, and we just talked about how bad I am with pronunciation, so. I'm going to say Tijuan Walker or Taiwan or Tujuan. <laughs> I think I don't it's T1. Tijuan. Tijuan. Yeah. Um, so he, on ESPN, he's ranked 204. I took him in my last pick in my last mock draft I did. Mm -hmm. um, so he's a great guy to stick on your bench because you know how injury prone pitchers are. One of your starters you're grabbing is going to get hurt. Um, I think you're getting a lot of upside for a last pick in the draft. Um, I think people kind of forgot about how he used to be a top prospect in baseball because he missed a year with injury. Mm -hmm. um, but last year he had a 349 ERA, 8.4 strikeouts per nine. Um, so I think you're going to get some solidness. Um, maybe not quite ace, but he's a great option to have to stick in when one of your aces gets hurt. And what are we talking about? A mid threes ERA? Yeah, yeah, 349. Nice. Um, and I don't think he's at risk when it's a, your last pick of the draft. No, that's not too bad, especially no. to be a filler if one guy goes down with, you know, a short-term injury and you can just plug him in for a mm -hmm. couple of weeks. That's not bad. Yeah. Um, okay, next guy on my list. We actually had someone say to mention this guy last year, mm -hmm. um, and that's Adam Duvall. Um, 29 years old, 33 home runs and 31 home runs in two full seasons, uh, 103 and 99 RBIs. Um, this guy can hit some home runs. Mm -hmm. The only downside for Adam Duvall is that he falls off in the second half. Um, but I, I read an article that said he's working on that. He's changing his routine. He's changing his diet um, so that he can stay strong through the second half. If this guy figures out the second half and he hits, you know, 20 home runs in the first half and 20 home runs in the second half, this guy could be a huge deal down there at ranked 142 right now in Yahoo. Yeah, you know, I've been taking him in a few mock drafts and sticks to stick into the utility spot mm -hmm. or even bench sometimes. It's like power hitters are going 
deep. Like you can really fill your team up with power hitters. Yeah, this absolutely. And the other thing too is if he, this guy's only good for the first half of the season, mm -hmm. um, I mean, he's pretty cheap for a first half rental. He is. Um, and if he powers you through to a hot start, you got some time to watch the waiver wires for your breakouts. Yeah, and exactly. So, so if he does fall off the second half, you can fill right. in. Fill so in I form. think he's a good option. I'm going to be I am for yeah. sure. Nice. All right. So next, I've got a guy I tried last year, but he got hurt for a while. But when he was in, he's still solid. And that's Jonathan Gray. Not to be confused with his brother, Sonny Gray. Um, <laughs> but ESPN ranks him 153. I took him in around 17 of a mock draft. Um, and that was after I already had all my starting pitcher spots filled. So um, you could either another, take him. Another backup. Another backup. Another guy, like if you put in when he's got a two-start week, something mm -hmm. like that. Or um, take as a last starter if you're waiting on pitching. Uh, but last year he had 9.1 strikeouts per nine, a 367 ERA, and he had a 313 ERA at Coors. So it doesn't seem like Coors Field is really hurting him that much. That's pretty good. Um, and I think the Rockies are kind of thinking of him as their ace for next year. So they'll be giving him good run support. I think they got a good defensive team. Um, even with the bad ballpark, I think this guy could put up some good numbers for you and everyone will overlook him just because of the, the name because of the jersey. Yeah, yeah, because of the park. Mm -hmm. I actually read um, an article that was predicting the like the Cy Young winner and stuff yeah. like that, and uh, it actually had him as a as a as a long shot Cy Young winner uh -huh. for the National League, yeah. and it was and, and they pointed that out. It, you know, who where do you when do you get a Cy Young out of Colorado? But yeah, that would be a big turnaround. I yeah. think uh, the most successful pitcher of the Rockies might have been Mike Hampton. That's mainly because of his hitting. Yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> in Colorado. Yes. <laughs> okay, next guy on my list. This is a uh, a third baseman, Jake Lamb. No. Um, now, uh, ranked at 101, uh, solid past two years. 29 home runs, 30 home runs, 840 OPS, 844 OPS, 91 RBIs, 101 RBIs. That's the past two years. Mm -hmm. 81 runs, 89 runs. Um, pretty consistent over the past two years. Um, <clears throat> I think it's it's nice consistency, and this would be a pretty nice con uh, consolation if you don't get one of the big third basemen. And um, I, I notice he's going around a few third basemen in um, – you know, around that 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 area. Mm -hmm. One of them I don't like at all, and uh, that's Adrian Beltre. Yeah. The other one I, I do like, and I would consider, and that's Mustakis. Ah, uh, yeah. You know, I've been seeing him come up in mock drafts. I don't know if he's ever ended up on my team because how often I'm doing mock drafts, I'm getting like a Arenado super early, or I'm waiting a long time and getting like a Miguel Sano. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, yeah, if you fall back and you're looking for middle draft, the draft guys, there's there's a few to look for. So don't yeah. panic if you miss out on the right. Arenado, yeah. the Donaldson. Yeah, that's it's one of those things. Guys. If you're gonna spend money big early on on a first baseman or a shortstop, mm -hmm. you know you got this guy. Yeah, and I think that's a big point of sleepers is everybody's gonna get fill a spot in the first few rounds. But if you don't, if you miss out and you have an empty spot falling down the draft, you you can relax because you know all about these late draft guys. Exactly. So. Miss out on third. It's not filling up for you as the draft goes. Don't panic. Look for guys like this. Got a this. couple of guys. Yeah, mm -hmm. just avoid Beltre. He'll, yeah. be, he'll be showing up on my bus list. What, what is he, like 39 years old now? He's 39, yeah. Wow. Um, and I think he's got some competition with uh, Gallo on the same team. Um, all right, so my next one and my last pitcher I've got is Ras Rossiel Iglesias. Now, I know you're going to correct me with the pronunciation. He's the closer for the Reds. I think you're pretty close. Um He's 132 ESPN. I took him around 15 of the mock. I saw some projections that he's got Kenley Jensen level stuff, but mm. several rounds later, I think I same round mock draft where I took him 15th round. Kenley Jensen went seventh round. Yeah. So and seventh round is I think late for Jensen. Yeah, and That's, so I've been seeing him go sixth, yeah, fifth, even. You have to really invest in closer if you're taking Jansen. Mm -hmm. If you're not willing to do that, this might be a good uh, fallback as the type of strikeouts per nine, low ERA. Um, um, I think he was around 11 strikeouts per nine. I don't know. I don't think. How I long has he been in the league? Last year was like his first full season as a closer. Okay. And I picked him up towards the end of the year because uh, I had that Herrera closer on the Royals that was failing on me. And this guy really helped pick up the slack. Nice, nice. Um, okay, next guy on my list, Paul DeYoung. Mm -hmm. This guy is ranked all the way down at 224, um, and I don't even know why. This guy was the runner-up rookie of the year last year in the National League. Okay. Solid 857 OPS, 25 home runs in just 108 games. Um, I had him on my team last year, and he eventually took the spot of Carpenter. I think they're both on the same team, they're both uh -huh. on the Cardinals. He took Carpenter's spot. I drafted Carpenter way before I drafted DeYoung. Actually, I picked DeYoung up on the waivers. Um, but, uh, you know, he also hit 13 home runs in AAA last year. So that brings his total to 38 home runs. 
I think this guy is a steal at shortstop second baseman. And I think this is an example of a guy who is, this is why I'm not so high on someone like Altuve, because I can get him as my last pick. And I mean, dude, he hit just as many home runs in uh, what, 50 less games. Yeah. Um, you know, one thing, one reason why I think people might be low on him is because the number of one hit wonders that come from the Cardinals. Wow, really? Um, so the guy that played shortstop for the Cardinals the year before, I drafted him in the draft thinking of the same thing. He had like 17 home runs, 11 steals, and he lost a starting job. Mm, um, so maybe just some people have been burned by that. Uh, but if you if you lose out, like I said, like he said on like Altuve, look for guys like this later. Shoot, this guy is going to be my second bench, second baseman slash shortstop. So if I can draft him. If you guys don't steal them. <laughs> yeah, that's the thing. People in our league watch our videos. So. Yeah, right. Um, Wolves, I tell you. Yes, they are. <laughs> All right, so I'm actually into my hitters. And I had to put pitchers first to make sure I got some because I just tend to research hitters so much because I just enjoy watching the hitting part of the game more. Oh, yeah. um, but the first hitter I've got is Chris Davis with a K. Ah, yes. Um, one reason I, I really like him well, he's ranked 56 ESPN. I just had a mock where I took him seventh round. So that's the area where we just talked about where like a Jansen's going. Mm -hmm. So if you if you um, take those closures I talked about later, you can take like this type of a hitter in that same He round. had like 42 home runs last year. Yeah, it's, I think it's two years in a row of over 40 yeah. home runs. Yeah. It's, what's funny is I think his batting average is exactly the same two years in a row, 247. So, but the batting average is might be scaring some people away. Yeah, especially if you're in a batting average league. We're yeah. in an OPS league. We We're in an OPS league. Um, I think he's been over 800 OPS every year, even with only the 247 batting average with his high slugging percentage. Yeah. Um, but uh, I like this guy because if you early take like an Altuve, like Barry's talking about not doing, or a Betts, or a Trey Turner, and you're not going to get the home runs out of your top pick, here's 40 home runs in the middle of the draft. Yeah. Um, that could kind of save you there. I think there's a few more guys like that. Um, actually, my next pick is one another one of those. Uh, but I think, you know, if you're... If you love those early guys that aren't huge home runs, or if you take pitchers early, this is the type of guy that can get you the home runs. Yeah, I think there's a lot of home runs deep, so mm -hmm. we'll we'll continue to talk about that. Um, the next guy on my list is the only pitcher. So you were had a lot of pitchers. I got one pitcher, and that's Drew Pomeranz, ranked all the way down at 200 right now. This guy, two years in a row, 3.32 ERA both years, nine strikeouts per nine inning. Um, he won 17 games with Boston last yeah. year. And I can't believe that this guy is getting overlooked so much, dude. I mean, that's yeah. pretty That's pretty consistent. He's going to be playing for a good team. He's going to get you, you know, 175 to, to 200 strikeouts in the season if he, if he, if he pitches for 200 uh, innings. Um, solid. Yeah. And I think I've had some mock drafts where I took him where he was on my bench. Yep. And, uh, I like good pitchers on your bench because you can swap out with good matchups. Yeah. You know, if they're right. facing... Or you can get those two start weeks. Yeah, either two starts or they're facing the worst hitting team in the league that week or something like that. Swap them out with the guys that are facing Colorado or something yeah. or, the, yeah. or Houston or somebody like that yeah. during the week. I've done some mock drafts where I've just been stacked mm -hmm. with pitching on my bench yeah. and in my, in my starting rotation. Yeah. I think we should do a video, a mock draft video. Yeah, that'd be fun. Maybe yeah. a live stream. Right. Yeah. That'd be if we cool. can figure out the technical side, we're not that. I'm not that good at that part. Well, we'll figure it out. Yeah. All right. So my next pick is a guy that was in the Rookie of the Year running last year. Uh, that's Josh Bell. Mm. Um, McCutcheon left the Pirates, so he might be moving to right field uh, now. So uh, he should be first base and outfield eligible in your league. Uh, he's got a lot of power. As a rookie, he hit 26 home runs, and it wasn't quite the number of at bats that a full season would give you. So he. You know, there's always a sophomore slump risk, but maybe he pushes 30 home runs for you and he's going deep enough. I took him in round 13 in a mock recently. He's going deep enough to where you're, he's not going to be your best hitter. You just, it's like bonus home runs, yeah. I think, at that round. Um, <laughs> so, you know, if you're Altuve or Goldschmidt, you took early, you didn't hit a home run, this guy might hit one that day and make you yeah. do good. You know, I've seen him quite a few times uh, doing my mock drafts. I've never taken him, mm -hmm. um, but I don't know a lot about him, so maybe I should look into him a little bit more. Yeah. It's, well, it's a good thing, like, um, you don't have fantasy or defense figured into fantasy because he's terrible at defense right. at first base. Yeah. I, I was watching a game where he's playing the Giants this year, and he just watched a couple pickoff balls go right by him. Yeah. Yeah. But I'm glad there's no defense. I don't yeah. want to play with that. Um, all right. Good choice. Next one for me uh, Kyle Seeger. Uh, this guy is, uh, now this is, this is Corey Seager's brother, right? Mm -hmm. It's really his brother. Yeah. I think it's his older yeah. brother. His older brother. Yeah. Okay. 
Because Sonny Gray is not really John Gray's brother. Mm. Brother from another mother, right? I don't know. I didn't think Google so. that and tell us. Yeah. <laughs> we don't we didn't research family trees in this before this. That'll be the next video. Yeah. Um, anyways, Kyle Seeger, uh, ranked at 106 right now. 25 plus home runs past four years in a row. 96 RBIs last two or four years. Another third base consolation. This is another guy who's going around the same area as Jake Lamb, Musakis, Beltre. And I think he's a better option than Beltre, but I'm taking Lamb and Musakis before I take him. But definitely a good you know, guy to get, brings you some consistency, can slot him into the third base. Um, and this guy, I, I would even consider him for a utility spot if I needed to. Yeah. I was actually trying to look up if John, Jonathan Green and Sonny Green are related, but I spelled it wrong. <laughs> oh, well, I'll move on. Yeah. <laughs> um, where did I leave off? I was after Josh Bell. I've got Trey Mancini. Um, mm -hmm. This is another guy that had a great first full season, over 20 home runs. He really broke out. He's ranked all the way down at 134. ESPN just took him 19th in a mock draft. Um, that's like fourth outfielder utility spot territory. And his two seasons in minors before coming up were both over 20 home runs and only about 120 games. He's a uh, in and out 300 hitter. Um, so I think you're going to get a very balanced guy that people are forgetting all about mm -hmm. uh, because, you know, the, the judge and uh, st uh, Stan, Stan, um, all those other guys that just hit so many home runs, and like the Orioles don't get a whole lot of national attention either right now. Yeah. So I think uh, everybody's going to be, unless you live in Baltimore or something like that, this guy's going to be falling down to where you're going to get a lot of value. Right. Nice. Yeah, I don't even recognize the name. <clears throat> all right, you're going to love this option here. My next, uh, my next guy is Chris Taylor, mm. um, a Dodger. Yeah. Uh, this guy is all the way down at 195, man. Ranked one, 195 right now. Mm -hmm. I don't know why. Another reason why Altuve is back in my mind. Because this guy hit 21 home runs last season. 850 OPS, 17 stolen bases, 85 RBIs, 72... Or, uh, I'm sorry, 85 runs, 72 RBIs in just 140 games. Um, now, I don't know if the home runs are real with this guy because I looked at his minor league stats and I didn't see a lot of power out of him. But uh, you know what? Why is this guy going so deep? I think that's partially because that season kind of came out of nowhere that he yeah. had last year. He's one of the guys that I that I'm hoping will uh, be part of the Dodgers' downfall next year because they had so <laughs> many guys just come out, kind of come yeah, out of nowhere last right. year. Um, they got a lot of depth at pitching, but some of their hitters just. Uh, uh, nobody knew where it came well, from. I'm going to take a shot on this guy that deep for mm -hmm. sure, because if he comes anywhere close to that, he's going to be a value. And this guy, I think, can play everywhere, oh. like second second base, shortstop. I think he's even out, outfield eligible. Yeah, um, he's he's all over the place, at least in Yahoo leagues. Yeah, um, I, I think he played most of the year in outfield. So it depends. Just check your uh, the rules on your, the position eligibility. He's definitely got second base eligibility. Yeah. So I will take your Dodger and counter you a Giant. All right. That's Brandon Belt. I know this guy is very divisive, even among Giants fans, on whether or not he really is good. But the reason I think he's good in our format, our OPS format, is he walks a lot. Mm -hmm. um, his last full season, he walked about 104 times. He hits lots of doubles. Uh, and he's last, got some pop, right? He's got some pop. And I think the Giants ballpark's been hurting him a little bit. But last year he got hurt, short in his season. I think it's... About 110, 120 games, he had 18 home runs. It's not bad. I think he hits about 25 or so this year, walks close to 100 times. And I think the pressure is going to be off because they're going to drop him a little farther down the lineup, not expecting to be the big run producer uh, because of picking up the, the couple guys the Giants Longoria picked up. Longoria and Yeah, and so yeah. Um, I think instead of reaching for those guys, just maybe let Belt fall in your lap. Nice. Yeah, he's going deep, right? He is going deep. ESPN's he's 199. 199 is pretty yeah. deep, yep. Okay, cool. All right, well, the, the next guy on my list, uh, almost 190, he's at 187. Mm -hmm. This guy was a huge disappointment for me last oh. year. Burned me big time. Um, I drafted him, like, in the fifth round last year. That was Jonathan Villar. Mm -hmm. I mean, this guy was so bad, he lost his starting job yeah. last year uh, on the Brewers. So, um, But now he's super cheap. And uh, I think it's worth a shot if this guy comes anywhere close to what he did in 2016. Pick him up, stash him on your bench, see what happens. He steals a lot of bases. Now, last year, 
I think he stole about 40 bases last year. You know, I was looking at him. I just took him to mock, and I think it's all the way down to like 25. Yeah, he's, he's way he's down there. He's like, but so he could. But the year he could, before, he stole 60. He stole 60, yeah. yeah. And I mean, he didn't play a whole season. Like I said, he lost his starting job last year. So the 40 stolen bases came in less than a full season. Mm -hmm. So I think he's still got that that uh, ability to steal bases, but he's got to get on base. Yeah. Um, you know, so if you pick him up, stash him, see what happens. Maybe this guy can can bounce back a little bit. Yeah, you know, um, I just did a mock draft where I got almost to the end and second base was still empty. And I took him um, and I took the guy that's my last pick. So you have to listen to the end um, to see who that is. Um, Cliffhanger. Cliffhanger. I like, I like that. But uh, this guy gave me a stolen base option. This other guy gave me a home run option. Nice. Uh, for, for if you miss out on second base all the way till the end. Perfect. Um, actually, here's another guy that's eligible at second base, uh, speak of the devil. Um, that's Ian Happ. Um, ESPN has him 168. I just took him around 17 of a mock draft. Uh, last year he had 24 home runs, eight stolen bases, and 840 OPS as a rookie. Now, I know the Cubs may not be able to totally guarantee him full time starting because they've got Addison Ra Russell, Javier Baez, mm -hmm. all those guys. Uh, but because he didn't have a full time spot, he's got outfield, second base, and third base eligibility. Um, so that's very valuable. And I think he's going to show the Cubs that he's better. Then a lot of the guys that they're trying to give starting time to, and they got to give them full time starting. Nice. I think it may end up being in center field, or they may end up trading like an Addison Russell or something. Aren't like that. Aren't they kind of getting frustrated with Russell? I think He's so. He's not and really I, performing. I heard some the... trade rumors, so maybe they play Baez at short, this guy at second. Mm -hmm. um, but I think the Cubs will have to find playing time for him. Um, he tore it up in the minors as well, and he was a top draft pick. So I would say um, this is a good guy to grab. And we talked about Adam Duvall starting fast. Um, this guy might be the guy that's your second half MVP. Nice. Yeah, good, good, good option there. All right, it wouldn't be a berry list if I didn't include a Yankee. Uh, At number nine, I got D.D. Gregarious. This guy is going one nineteen, um, and uh, this guy's improved in his offensive stats every year, year over year. He's improved. He hit 25 home runs last year, 87 RBIs. That's at shortstop in 136 games. He was hurt the first month uh, of the year last year. Um, he's a lefty hitting at Yankee Stadium, but he actually hit way better on the road. He did not hit well at Yankee Stadium. But if he puts it all together at Yankee Stadium, could you imagine the kind of numbers he could put up? Yeah, it could be interesting. I just saw um, a comparison of like Corey Seager uh, on the Dodgers mm -hmm. going super early. And then Didi Gregoris having very similar stats going much later. Um, so maybe you get more value there yeah, than, yeah. Than, than grabbing up Seager early. Yeah, absolutely. I think there's some value. And obviously, I'm going to, again, I'm going to plug the Yankees. Got a really good team. These guys are coming together. Supposed to win, win, win. I see a lot of opportunity to score runs and have some ribbies as well. Yeah. You know, a lot of people shame people that draft players on your favorite team. But I don't think it's a bad thing, especially, say, like a Brandon Belt or like your D.D. Gregorius, because if you watch your team every day, you know when your guys are yeah, hot, right. you know when they're going to slumps, oh, yeah. you know when to sit them and all that stuff, to where it's like, you know, I, I live on, we live in California, we're gonna hardly ever see televised games of say like the, the Cardinals or the Reds mm -hmm. or anything like that. So we may just stick one of the guy from that playing team and not realize he's, he's ice yeah, cold or something. Slow, right? yeah. yeah, I can't say enough about watching baseball. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, the year I had MLB TV and I was watching multiple games that were associated with my fantasy mm -hmm. team, I did really well that year. And, mm -hmm. and I would say absolutely do that. Yes, for sure. All right. Now the cliffhanger's over. Ooh. My last pick. All right. That is Scooter Jeanette. Ooh, I like him. Um, he's actually ranked outside the top 300. That's crazy. Game. And I've been taking him last pick a lot in mock drafts. Considering what he did last year, that's crazy. Yeah. The only time I didn't get him was a draft where I tried drafting Altuve. Uh, yeah, yeah. And, and that draft, he went undrafted. Um, but uh, I think he's a great option. Uh, some people might be saying the power came out of nowhere, but you know he had as many home runs if you take away his four home run game as Robinson Cano, who's going much earlier. Yeah. Um, and Robinson Cano is what thirty six now. Yeah. So. And and he had to win his starting job last year, so he didn't have quite a full season at bats, and he had twenty seven home runs, good amount of RBIs. He'll probably be right in the middle of that Reds lineup. Um, and Zach Cozart's gone, so there's no starting competition. So I think he is a full-time starter on a team that's in last place. So what does he got to do other than pad his stats? Yeah, right. Do um, good. Hit, yeah. hit behind uh, Joey Votto. Yeah, and it, they're playing in a super small ballpark. Mm -hmm. So nice. I think you got some home runs at second base there right at the end of the draft. Perfect. Um, all right, now on to my last guy. 
And I'm surprised this guy's going so far down too at, at 165. Jay Bruce mm -hmm. just got signed to, a, I think, a three-year contract with the Mets. Mm -hmm. Mets are bringing him back. They liked him. Average is 32 home runs and 96 RBIs with a 790 OPS uh, per 162 games. Uh -huh. It's pretty good. He hit 36 home runs last year with 101 RBIs and an 832 OPS, a little bit above what his normal, uh, what his average is. But um, I think he's still with within his prime or, you know, I think he's 30. Yeah, so I think this guy's got some years left and, uh, you know, he's putting up some home runs, putting up some pretty decent numbers. And, you know, to get him that deep, to get him, you know, 17th round, mm -hmm. ah, shoot, I'll take him and put him in my outfield. Yeah. I think you got to watch the format you're in with this guy because he's not a batting average hitter. So if you got a batting average lead, he's not an on base percentage guy. So if you got an on base percentage lead. Um, yeah. Also, I've heard some leagues penalized for strikeouts. Um, so yeah, I think he works hurt a lot of guys. Yeah. Then. <laughs> uh, but I think he works in our OPS league. But uh, watch out your other formats. Yeah. Yeah. All right, there we go. That's our uh, new, updated, new and improved sleepers list. It is. Uh, these are our sleepers, and it, we were able to do some mock drafts and kind of update where guys are falling, where we're getting guys, and where we thought they are uh, good deals. Yeah. So keep watching, dumb guys, for all your fantasy uh, advice. We are going to kill it this year with videos constantly. So yes. keep, keep with us and stay dumb. Stay dumb. Dumb guys.